Hey everyone, this is Harjit here. I hope you are enjoying different videos on my channel. In this specific video, we are going to talk about how to set up Spark on your laptop so that we can try different examples and uh, you know be it related to basic Spark batch or be it related to uh, streaming and uh, integrating with uh, Kafka or HBase or Cassandra. So what I have done here is uh, in this video, we are going to talk about the steps to uh, install Spark development environment. Let us start. First of all, we need good development ID. I personally like IntelliJ IDEA. It's a very good uh, ID for, uh, you know, Java and even Scala related, uh, you know, code. So I like it and uh, I have seen a lot of organizations these days using this ID. So I recommend you uh, to use this to have a flavor that, uh, you know, how if you're working in an enterprise environment, then you will get used to of uh, how this ID is used for uh, different kind of Spark development. You can download Community Edition and uh, uh, once you download it, it's very simple to install it. I have already downloaded it and uh, installing it is very easy. You just need to double click on it. And as soon as you double click, it will ask you that drag on uh, into the applications folder. So I just did this. I already have a version of IntelliJ IDEA installed. So it is asking me, do you want to keep the older one or you want to replace that? So I will say, okay, keep both. Uh, steps to install in Windows may be slightly dif different. Uh, but uh, they will be fairly simple and uh, ideally you should not be facing any issues. If you are still facing some issues, post a message in my comment section. I will definitely help you. Okay, this, this is done. So, cool. Let us check our idea, IntelliJ. Cool. This is starting up. So this is starting up. So once you have started IntelliJ IDEA, you will see this window. You can create a new project, you can import an existing project, or you can get it from your version control. For this specific course, we will use an already existing project, which is in my GitHub. So you can go to my GitHub and download this project. I have given it in the description of this video. And you can download a zip file. It's taking a few seconds to download. So once you have downloaded it, you will get a folder like this. You will get a zip file like this. You can open it and unzip it. Cool. So there are different directories already existing in this. We will discuss about these directories. To import this project, just click on import project. Go to the directory where your code is and just click on open. IntelliJ IDEA will ask you that how you want to build this project. This project is built using SPT. So I just select that and move ahead. And we will finish it. Awesome. So you can see the project is created. So this is the readme file which it, uh, which IntelliJ IDEA has already opened. So when you do uh, start it for first time. IntelliJ IDEA will start downloading few of the dependencies and start doing the project setup. So our project is ready. So this specific directory, project directory and .idea folder 
are basically IntelliJ IDEA IDE related directories. You don't need to worry about it. Uh, checkpoint directory is what I created as part of uh, you know running some of the examples of this project. In PPT folder, you will get the different PPTs which I have used in this course. In source folder, you will get different code which I have used in this course. Once you have installed your uh, IDE environment, then you need to set up Docker also. A word of caution for Windows users, if you're using a Windows Home Edition, you may probably not be able to use Docker on your machine. Docker is only supported on Windows Professional Edition. Some of the virtualizations, provisions or settings are not available on Windows Home Edition laptops. So if you're using Professional Edition of Windows, then you will be able to set up Docker on your machine. We are going to use Docker because we want to do some integration with Kafka and uh, Cassandra and few of the other modules. It will make it easier for you uh, because I have already installed those uh, and uh, created images for you and you can use this, use those images as part of this project. So let's not wait, let us download Docker. I have already downloaded Docker. So once you have downloaded, just double click on it. Mac will start to unzip it. And then the installation process will start. Steps to install Docker should be very similar in Windows also. Let me check. This may take few seconds to download. Okay, it is extracting update. Okay, so Docker is installed. If you want, you can go through a small tutorial for Docker or you can skip it also. You could see a small Docker icon here, uh, which will say Docker desktop is running. Awesome. Once you have downloaded and installed Docker, go to the directory where your Spark project is. In my case, it is this. We just need to run this command, Docker, Compose up. When you first time start it, it will start downloading all the images that you have mentioned in your Docker Compose file and it will start setting up them. It may take few minutes when you do it for first time. So I will speed it up for you. Awesome. Our images are installed. Our services are also ready now. So once you're done with this, you can go back to our ID. In our ID, you will see a directory named Spark Test. In that, there is already an object, Spark Build Test. So you can just right click on it and run this to check if everything from setup point of view is completed or not. This should show us a table. Okay, so we have a table with two columns H and B with some dummy values. This was just a test to check if Spark is running or not. If you're going to try Spark streaming applications on your laptop, uh, for that we have already set up Kafka. You will also need a Netcat kind of application. In Mac, generally this application already comes pre-installed. So you can try it like this. So you can say NCLK, NC stands for uh, uh, Netcat, and you can give a port number. I am giving a port number 12345, and then you can paste any message, write any message, 
this message will be sent to this specific port and our streaming application will connect to this port and uh, we will run our experiments uh, of uh, spark streaming uh, by reading this socket this will give us a feeling of a streaming application uh, if you do not have uh, netcat installed on your mac then you can install it with these simple commands brew install netcat if you are using something like ubuntu or any debian based operating system then you can use apt get installed netcat or if you are using any other linux system then you can use yum or any other package manager of your choice if you are using windows then you can just google download netcat and you should get a search result named nmap.org just click on that it should take you to a website and uh, on that website you will see a download option you can go down and uh, download this nmap 7.80 setup.exe this should work fine on windows you will be able to send data to a specific socket and read it from spark streaming application well that's all i had for this specific video i hope you will be able to set up your spark environment now very easily we will use this environment to learn spark and streaming concepts happy learning